Guys, we did not discover this farm until right after we put out our first guide. But this one, though, is for our Wish Ingrams and our Red Border Farming for our Season of the Wish weapons. This is no doubt the fastest method to get Red Borders this season. And that's Red Borders for the Wish weapons and Red Borders for the Undying weapons, which, by the way, have reprised roles. Now, we saw a couple Reddit threads about this last night over on the Destiny the Game Reddit. So we did some testing ourselves. And we're here to bring you our results. This farm is even simpler than the Dreaming City weapon farm that we went over yesterday. That one was still good, but it essentially netted you like one weapon every minute. And what makes that farm so good is if you're actually trying to hunt for a god roll for PvE or PvP, specifically on Dreaming City weapons, as they have new perk pulls and an origin trait. And we touched on the god rolls for all those weapons. Today's farm is all about locking down red border stuff. And of course, obtaining those weapon patterns so that you yourself can unlock these weapons. Now to do this farm, you want to load into the Davillion Mist in the Dreaming City and equip a Wombo Detector Ghost Mod so that you can see chests and resources within a 50 meter radius. You also want to equip a scout rifle or a sniper rifle as well. Now, when you aim down science with a scout or sniper, you're able to see chests and resources further out than the 50 meters that the ghost mod offers you. And all you're really doing here is opening every chest and collecting every burying bow you can find. This is because Bungie made a change this season where you have a chance to get Ingrams when doing this. Now in the Dreamy City, you're able to get Wish Ingrams as well as Gunsmith Ingrams. And if you have the Wishful Generosity seasonal bonus complete, every time you you get a wish ingram you'll sometimes double up meaning you'll get two wish ingrams instead of just one now in order to get this seasonal bonus you need to hit rank 10 with ribbon don't worry if you don't have this completed yet doing this farm will also get you tons of ribbon reputation every time you open a chest or get a baryon bow you're getting reputation and the chests themselves are able to drop wish ingrams gunsmith ingrams and even lair keys while the baryon bow can only drop wish ingrams so it's worth really just grabbing everything now you can do this in any dreaming city area we only ran this within the mist during our hour-long tests. The route we found to work best was ahead to the left upon spawning and then scour the cliffside and rocks first before dropping down and sparing up to the Blindwell entrance door. Then sparing past the door and down the path to check the nearby rocks and caves below before sparing back to where you first spawned in. Then take out your sniper, look to the cliffside at the left, aim down sights, and then simply wait a few seconds until you start to see chests spawn back in, then rinse and repeat. Now once you finish this route, instead of sparing back to the start, you technically can fast travel there instead, but on our test, this wasn't the best play, simply because other people are now also doing this farm, as it's gotten more widespread. So once you fast travel, you run the risk of loading into an instance where other players are already opening the chest and picking up those burying bows for themselves. Now, this doesn't lock you out of running the farm at the same time, but if they open a chest and you don't get to it fast enough, it will despawn. So you want to try to be as alone as possible when doing this farm, free of blueberries. Also, don't waste your time killing the big score in high value targets, opening the chest that requires arc charges, or even doing public events, as public events take too long for just one chest. And the other stuff, never drop Ingrams during our runs. Now, after an hour of doing this with the Wishful Generosity Seasonal Bonus active, we had 26 Wish Ingrams and 30 Gunsmith Ingrams. Now, decrypting those 26 Wish Ingrams at Riven via the Wish Weapon Focusing, which costs two Ingrams each, netted us four Red Border Wish Weapons. Now, I understand this part really comes down to luck, but granted, if you have some of the Seasonal Bonuses and you checked out our seasonal guide, there are ways to mitigate this RNG. And keep in mind, you can just do the basic decryption that only costs one Ingram, but then you run the risk of getting armor as well. Now, for undying weapons, which are craftable this season, they cost two wish Ingrams to focus. So again, the main thing here is getting as many Ingrams as possible. In the process, though, you'll also have 30 gunsmith Ingrams. And there's a lot to do at the gunsmith now. You can take advantage of the focusing at the gunsmith or even just turn them in for random drops. But what you're looking at is around 50 wish Ingrams in 60 gunsmith ingrams every two hours with this farm, which is quite a bit. Nowhere else that I see has this level of drops, at least in regards to wish ingrams. Now, I do want to mention before we get into the god rolls for these weapons, that keep in mind, guys, you obviously don't have to farm like this. If you just want to play the activity, enjoy the game, go at your own pace, by all means, do that. Some of us want the nasty stuff now, hence why we put out this farm. First is the shotgun super cluster. This is a strand precision slug shotgun. Now, before we dive too deep into these weapons, let's go over the origin traits. Dragon's Vengeance. When an ally dies or you reach critical health, this weapon's magazine refills and it gains bonus range, charge rate, and handling. Now, luckily for us, the community research notes here on D2 Foundry states that it grants the following benefits for 11 seconds upon reaching critical health or an ally's death. But it'll refill the magazine. For fusion rifles, it decreases the charge time by 5% 
sense. It's still question marks for range and handling, but hopefully that'll be updated soon. Now, as far as perks go, we've got a new trait called Deconstruct here. It states that dealing sustained damage grants bonus damage against vehicles and constructs and partially refills the magazine. And damage with primary ammo or against constructs provides additional progress. Now, constructs includes barricades, turrets, stasis crystals, and other objects created in the field. Now, we also have attrition orbs, which we've already covered on the ritual weapon, but it says that dealing sustained damage creates an orb of power. Now, keep in mind, this is a slug shotgun. For PvP, you obviously want to maximize your range. Slide shot, fragile focus, all day long. But for our PvE roles, things start to get interesting. We've got reconstruction, four times the charm, damage perks like surround it, which is actually easy to do with a shotgun. Vorpal is also on here, but then you have cascade points, which I am not seeing on a slug shotgun. Again, final blows or sustained precision hits with another weapon will increase this weapon's rate of fire. Essentially, a blow thine load perk. Now, in that first trait column, you have a perk called Slice, where casting your class ability that allows this weapon to sever targets on hit for a brief duration, up to a maximum number of targets. A really nice way to debuff, guys. But again, I'm going to be focusing on max damage. So either surround it with reconstruction or even four times a charm. And if I can't proc surround it, I'm probably going to give Cascade a try here. Now, for my PvP players that don't want to rock slide shots, Threat Detector is also a great option. And when it comes to like a good slug shotgun inside of PvP, it's really all the subjective stuff, right? Meaning, we're just going to have to play within a C. Moving on to Scatter Signal. This is a Strand Fusion Rifle, Rapid Fire Frame, beautiful weapon, and it's got a lot of goodies, man. We've got Controlled Bursts. We're landing every shot in a burst, grants this weapon increased damage and reduced charge time for a short duration. You can combo that with Overflow. Outside of that, you've got that Slice Perk, which on a Fusion Rifle, you can actually make work if you're like trying to spread sever amongst multiple targets. I like just spray your bolts out there and hit them. I would assume I haven't actually played with Slice, but I'm assuming that's how you could use it. For my PvP players though, Kickstart is always a great option. You've got Perpetual Motion, Surplus, some interesting combinations, guys. Personally, one of my favorite fusions in the game is a Terror of Loop, and that one can roll with Kickstart and under pressure. I'm curious to see if Scatter Signal can compare to that one. Next, we have Appetence. This is a Stasis Trace Rifle. And no, not Aggreceptor. This is a Legendary. And it's got so many good things. You've got Killing Tally on this weapon. You've got Overflow also on this weapon. Even Headstone is on this thing. Now, for PvP players, I'm not really seeing anything here that's wowing me. Like, maybe you could take advantage of high ground, but I'm really not seeing anything too crazy. PvE is where this Trace Rifle is going to shine. Whether it's a one-for-all roll or a Killing Tally roll, and then combine that with Demolitionist, and then synergize it with a multitude of Stasis Artifact mods we have this season, and the Stasis buffs that just went out, this is a Trace Rifle you're going to want to have. Next, we have Lethophobia, the first of its kind. A bow with Disruption Break. This bow is going to be annoying inside of PvP. You can imagine all the things you can combine with this bow. Proc Disruption Break, Quick Swap to a multitude of other weapons, maybe even like Lucky Pants and a Hand Cannon, and it's easy cleanup with increased damage from Disruption Break. You also have Impulse Amplifier, which massively increases projectile velocity and increases reload speed. Honestly, guys, whether you're using this bow by itself or in combination with another weapon, for my PvP players, this one's a nasty one. Now, for PvE players, we've got Explosive Head, Repulsor Brace, a new trait called Permability, where using your class ability changes this weapon's damage type to match your subclass until you stole the weapon. I'm really trying to figure out what the benefit here is. Considering match game is not really something that's a problem inside of Destiny, I guess the benefit here is like, okay, you do run into a scenario where you want to cover the rainbow. You're rocking a solar subclass, maybe an arc heavy, a strand weapon in your kinetic slots, and this void bow, proc your class ability, and you can go back and forth between all of them and pretty much take care of all elemental shields. Outside of that, though, I think Impulse Amplifier, even successful warm up with Explosive Head, is still a great combination. But the standout perk here for me is, of course, Disruption Break. Next, we have Scalar Potential, a beautiful rapid fire frame pulse rifle. Guys, Bungie has been loading us up with some good rapid fire pulses, whether it was the reworked Jurassic Green or the craftable Overso Edict. Scalar Potential has that god roll that I loved on Overso Edict, that being Head Seeker and Keep Away. Now, depending on how this weapon handles, that's going to be the deciding factor. Also, little things like its scope can make a big difference because I know a lot of people didn't like Overso Scope. It just rubbed you wrong. Now, for my PvE players, this is an arc weapon, and you can lean in here with Golden Tricorn in combination with, say, Unlined Action or even Overflow. Now, Pulse Rifles did get a buff this past season inside of PvE. Granted, I'm just not that crazy about rapid fire pulses when it comes to PvE. I think they're hugely overlooked inside of PvP, but I'm just not crazy about them in PvE. This one may change me though. I'm willing to try it. Now the final weapon amongst our season of the wish weapons. And yes, we're going to touch on Vex offensive weapons.
weapons in just a moment. We have the Doomed Petitioner, though. This is a linear fusion rifle, and it's an aggressive frame, meaning it shoots a three-round burst. Now, here's the thing. It's got some interesting combinations, whether it's Envious Assassin or Reconstruction with something like Surround It. And I've used a Surround It aggressive linear fusion rifle in the past called Briar's Contempt, and that literally carried me solo in the Ghost of the Deep Dungeon. But I will say, Surround It is hard to stay procced. But we also have Precision Instruments. This one's really interesting. It states that dealing sustained damage increases precision damage. Now, obviously, for a normal linear, this wouldn't be that good, as those stacks of precision instruments are reliant on you landing hits. And for a normal linear fusion rifle, that would pretty much require you to eat up your entire magazine to reach that max buff of 25%. Now, in theory, for precision instruments on an aggressive frame, that shouldn't be the case, considering it's a burst fire weapon, kind of like rapid hit on a pulse rifle. If you got like an aggressive pulse rifle and you got rapid hit, well, if you land all four crits, you get four stacks of rapid hits. I'm pretty sure here with precision instruments, you will be able to achieve something similar. And if that's the case, then a reconstruction role or perhaps even an envious assassin role would be very good on this linear. And for my PvP players, just use a grenade launcher. Now, moving on to our OG Vex offensive weapons. We have Imperative, a high impact kinetic scout rifle. It comes with the origin trait nano munitions. For being near allies, slowly build up a partial emergency ammo refill for the next time this weapon runs out of ammo. An emergency ammo amount increases with time spent near allies. Not a bad origin trait. The big thing that's sticking out to me though, trait wise on this weapon is of course, kinetic tremors. Always a good trait guys. It even got a buff this past season for certain weapons. I'm really curious to see how a kinetic tremor rabbit hit or even a kinetic tremor subsistence role would perform here. Demolitionist is also here. And for my PVP players, either rabbit hit or keep away with explosive payload all day long. Being the archetype that it is, it hits so hard. That in combination with the AOE effect of explosive payload is really going to mess with your enemies. Now, personally, back in the day, I was never that crazy about imperative, but some of these roles definitely look juicy. Next up, we have subjunctive. This is an arc lightweight frame SMG. It's got bolt shots. It's got shoot to loot. It's got subsistence, threat detector, stats for all. And again, guys, all these perks you can get enhanced considering they're craftable. Now, on the PvP side of things, nothing too crazy. I'm not really jumping up to use this one inside of PvP. You do have threat detector. You got swashbuckler, maybe, if you're doing a melee combo. But keep in mind, there's just so much competition amongst SMGs. It's going to be hard here for subjunctive to really stand out. But it can definitely be a contender against the likes of Ikelos inside of PvE. Next, we have the pulse rifle, Adoritive. Actually, one of my favorite weapons. I know, it's a 390. No one's that crazy about adaptive frames. But back in the day, I very much enjoyed using this pulse. Unfortunately, there's really nothing in that first column that's helping this pulse rifle inside of PvP, outside of maybe air assault. Now, Slick Draw did get a slight buff last season, where that decrease there in target acquisition wasn't as hefty. And again, the enhanced version, the craftable version, doesn't hurt you as much either. But the increase in handling, especially for this 390, will be very noticeable. I'm curious to see how Slick Draw in a Head Seeker role would feel. But for PvP players, I'm just not that crazy about what I'm seeing here. Now, for my PvE players, you've got Incandescent, Shoot to Loot, Feeding Frenzy, hell, even that Attrition Orbs perk. And look, don't overlook Hill Clip. I've actually been looking at Hill Clip for certain scenarios where you need that little bit of health bomb. But guys, this season especially is so important to have a good solar weapon with Incandescence. We did an entire breakdown of all the artifact mods, and solar weapons are just so potent. Just a simple legendary with Incandescence. And I do like 390s inside of PvE, and considering Pulse Rifles got a blanket buff inside of PvE, a door to fear would be a great option. Now, finally, the hand cannon Optative has returned. This is a Void 180. Now, listen, don't write it off just yet. It's actually got some good combinations. And let me just say this too, Optative years ago actually felt good to use. Now, the thing that makes 180s good is the ability to three tap. And you can accomplish that with Kill Clip. You also have perks like Keep Away, which can help you. And of course, Rabbit Hit. Now, if you're not that crazy about the PvP roles or 180s inside of PvP, the PvE roles might intrigue you. You've got Golden Tricorn with Repulsor Brace, which could have some really good synergy, especially if you're rocking a Void build. Demolitionist is also present here. And again, Deconstruct, I know we haven't really been focusing on this, but I'm curious to see if there's going to be a big selling point for that trait. Now, with that being said, in my opinion, the best 180 in the game that's Void is Word of Crota. I've got this Adept roll right here with Enhanced, Sword Logic, and Enhanced Demolitionist, and it's one of my favorite hand cannons in PvE. Optative doesn't really have that level of nasty here to me, on top of the origin trait for Word of Crota being so good. So guys, those are your seasonal weapons for Season of the Wish. Let me know in the comments below what you think. We'll be reviewing pretty much all of these throughout the season, but if there's one that's really jumping out to you, feel free to let us know. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching, and as always, 
Slap that like button like your mama told you right. 